All right. So we're starting our next section, Lab 8, on our Cognix Easy Builder workshop series. We are recording this for YouTube. If you're just now joining, please take a look at the previously recorded videos. We're going to be moving fairly quickly, and you will need those for reference for what we're working on here. So what we're going to be using is the patented tool by Cognix, referred to as PatMax. PatMax is an extremely powerful pattern recognition tool for us to be able to use for image analysis. So first thing we need to do in our example is come under Get Connected. We're going to select New Job and clear the data out from the previous job that we were working on. I'm now going to come back under Setup Image, load the images from the PC, choose my Navigate button, and I'm going to point to the file folder referred to as DIN Terminal and say OK. So now I have this wonderful part here showing this DIN Rail screw terminal. So what we're going to do is we're now going to go just straight to Inspect Part. And I'd like you to go under the Counting Tools, and this will become more evident why I want you to choose this one in a minute. And I want you to choose one called PatMax Patterns and hit Add. And what I'd like you to do is take the model box. The model is what we are training on and put it just around the DIN clip. Take the search box, and we're going to use this button on the toolbar labeled Maximize Region to make it full screen. And now we're going to say OK. So now we're going to look for this part anywhere within our field of view. Now you'll notice, for those of you who have already watched the preceding videos or have been on with us since the beginning of the workshop today, that this pattern tool, PatMax, is behaving differently than our previous pattern tool. In this case, every contrast line and every detail of the part is highlighted and being analyzed in detail. So you see all the green edge lines around it. So we're doing a more in-depth analysis of the part. So as I click to my next image, we still find it with no problem. The next image in, we still find it. This one, we lose it. And the only real difference is the angle of rotation that we have on the part. So what I'm going to do is go under the settings for the tool. And I'm going to take a look. And I have the ability to control the angle tolerance. So I'm going to run this up until our part is found again. In this case, it was around 27. I'm going to go ahead and run this up to 30. Still found the part without a problem. All right, so I'm going to now go to my next image in. Now we've turned the other way. Lost the part, though, so I'm going to have to increase my angle tolerance. And as I go up, well, right around 44, we were able to find it. Now, you notice we have a few contrast lines that are red. This means that this part doesn't match the original model at all. The yellow is close, and the green is a good match to our original trained part that you see here in the lower right-hand corner. So this angle tolerance. Normally in our live workshops, I'll ask, what do we need to set it on to get the part no matter how it's rotated? And I'll have people come back and say 360, because there's 360 degrees in a circle. One thing to keep in mind, this is a angle tolerance, meaning it's a plus and minus value. So in order to get this to go 360 degrees, the tolerance would be 180. So plus 180, minus 180 from the orientation of the way the original part was taught. So which is better, a more generous angle or a narrower angle? Well, it depends on what you're doing with the data. If you need to set this up where you're very precise, very critically aligned, you may want a very small tolerance. If you want this to be very forgiving, like a robot finding a part to do vision guidance, you may want that very forgiving at that portion. So you would increase it. Purely depends on your part, your application, and what you're doing with it as to what angle tolerance you're going to need. <clears throat> so I'm going to get my next image in. We still find the part. Next image in, still find it. Ah, this one. If you notice these two images, my part's now farther away. So imagine that we were setting this camera up for boxes coming down a conveyor. 
each box could be a slightly different position, one farther away, one closer, and the scale changes. So the camera doesn't move, the conveyor doesn't move, the box is just a little farther away from it. So this is where we can change the scale tolerance. So as I start increasing the scale tolerance, I can go until the point where we find the part again. In this case, it was right around 25. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to 30 just to give us a little more room. We still found the part. Next one in, we rotate, scale change, we find. Scale change, rotate. Oh, here again, we're now closer. That box in our example I just referenced is a little closer to us. So let's increase our scale tolerance. So now I'm gonna bump this up to about 45, still able to find the part and do the analysis. The normal pattern tool is not able to do this. You need PatMax for this in order to be able to handle this more precision control of both the angle and scale tolerance of the part itself. So now I'm gonna choose the next one in. We find without a problem. Ooh, look at these images, the next couple in. Notice how our lighting levels are changing. So changes happen in lighting, something has happened, something has gotten hit, gone offline, light has, has uh, gotten knocked off kilter, lighting level changes, but Pat Max is still able to find the part. Next image in, we still find it. This one. Believe it or not, I don't know if you can see it, the part is actually still there. If you look at your computer monitor just the right way, you can still see the outline of the part. It is actually there, but it is very, very dark. So what we need to change there is our contrast. In our previous examples, we talked about how the contrast is the difference between the color of our part versus the color of our background. But where we had to increase the angle and scale tolerances to make it more forgiving, to make the contrast more forgiving is we need to say there needs to be a smaller difference between the part and the background. So as I lower my contrast level, I'm gonna bump this down to a three. Now we're able to find the part and keep going with it. All right, next one in. Here's a part being put in a plastic container. It's able to see through it, still find it. Even when these dividing lines of the containers are right over the top of the part, notice we have our red line saying this part of the pattern no longer matches, but there is still enough there to be able to find it. So we, next one in, this is looking at it through an anti-static bag. So we're actually making sure the part is in the bag, able to see through that pattern that is built into it, that checkerboard, still be able to see the part. Here's one with a lot of reflection coming off a plastic bag, still found it. Another bag, this one has holes in it, totally different texture, we still found it. Dirty, contaminated, foggy, misty lens covered, it's still able to see through it and pick up the pattern. This one's known as a confusing background. A lot of the things going on here, but we're still able to find our pattern amidst the background. Oh, here's one though, where we weren't able to find it. So now we have to look at our settings again. This one, our acceptance threshold. This is how close does it need to be with the model? In which case, if I bump it down just a few points, able to find it with no problem. You never want to run your acceptance threshold at zero or close to it because then it'll find anything. It doesn't even have to be close to it. If you run it too strict at 98, 99%, then your parts have to be very, very precise and very consistent and very identical one to the next. Most pattern matching applications wind up running between 40 and 80 on the scale of acceptance. And that variance just depends on how much your parts vary coming down the production line. If they're very tight, then you can run a higher threshold. If there can be a lot of variance, then you can run it much lower. So test, test, test. All right, next one in different type of confusing background, we still find it. And because we used a counting PatMax tool, you notice we actually found three of them and we're getting individual XY coordinates for the center of each one of them. So now we can be able to use this to identify parts and then potentially feed these to a robot for a robotic pick and place type application. Different orientation, different scales, and we still find it laying on top of each other, part of it is occluded, and we still found it, and then back to the beginning of our series. 
So PatMax is able to solve a great deal for us and a great deal of variation from one part to the next. So that being said, that ends the PatMax section of this lab exercise. So we're going to be then transitioning over to our next section.